Hello and welcome to another episode of today's GK. I am Pooja Devidi and we bring to you objective questions on a daily basis to help you crack prelims. So let's begin with the practice question of the last segment. Consider the following statements. The governor may issue ordinances under Article 213 of the Indian Constitution. The governor is bound by the advice of his council of ministers. So we have to select the correct statement. Both these statements are correct. The correct answer is option C. A controversy has erupted in Kerala over the reappointment of the Gopinath Ravindran as the Vice Chancellor of Kannur University. Now, the governor of the state is saying that he approved the decision against his better judgment as Chancellor. This has put questions on the role of the governor, and that is we are discussing this. Article 153, you must keep in mind, which says that there shall be a governor for each state. One person can be appointed as governor for two or more states, that is after, of course, the reorganization of states start to occur in the 1950s. And a governor is appointed by the president. He or she is the nominee of the central government. It is stated that the governor has a dual role. First is that he is the or she is the constitutional head of the state who is bound by the advice of the council of ministers. Now, he or she functions as a vital link between the union government and the state government, that is the dual role. Article 157 and 158 specify the eligibility requirements for the post of the governor. Governor has the power to grant pardons and reprieves by the Article 161. There is a council of ministers with the CM at the head who is going to aid and advise the governor in exercise of his functions except some conditions for discretion that is provided for in the article 163 the governor appoints the chief minister and other ministers by article 164 governor assents withholds assent or reserves the bill for the consideration of the president passed by the legislative assembly that is in the article 200 governors may promulgate the ordinances under certain circumstances now this is under article 213 moving on Consider the following statements. The Great Indian Bustard is the state bird of Rajasthan. The Great Indian Bustard population is confined only to Rajasthan and Gujarat. The Great Indian Bustard is listed as critically endangered in the IUCN Red List. Now we have to select the correct answer. First is definitely correct. Second is incorrect because it is not confined only to Rajasthan and Gujarat, but Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh also has small population of Great Indian Bustard. Third is definitely correct that it is listed as critically endangered in the IUCN Red List. So option C is the correct answer. The center has approached the Supreme Court seeking modification of its order, directing that all transmission cables in the habitat of Great Indian Bustard be laid underground. The Great Indian Bustard, the state bird of Rajasthan, is considered India's most critically endangered bird. It is considered the flagship grassland species representing the health of the grassland ecology. That means the presence of great Indian bustard means the ecosystem of grassland is healthy. Its population is confined, confined mostly, not only, to Rajasthan and Gujarat. And small populations are also found in Maharashtra, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. The bird is under constant threats. Why? Because it can collide or it get electrocuted with power transmission lines, hunting that is still prevalent in Pakistan, habitat loss, and alteration as a result of widespread agriculture expansion. Let's move on and look at its protection status. International Union for Conservation of Nature Red List, it is critically endangered. Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Flora and Fauna, it is in the Appendix 1. In Convention on Migratory Species, it is under Appendix 1. Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, it is under Schedule 1. Moving on. With reference to the James Webb Space Telescope, consider the following statements. It is considered as a successor of the Kepler mission and will extend and complement its discoveries. It is the result of an international collaboration between NASA and the European Space Agency and the Canadian Space Agency. So we have to select the correct answer. First is not correct. Why? Because James Webb Space Telescope is not a successor of Kepler mission, but Hubble Telescope. Second is correct, definitely correct. The correct answer is option B. The James Webb Space Telescope is scheduled to be rocketed into orbit later this year, 2021. 
James Webb Space Telescope is the most powerful infrared telescope of National Aeronautics and Space Administration. It is also considered a successor of the Hubble Telescope and will extend and complement its discoveries. That means it will work on the discoveries of Hubble Telescope. The telescope is the result of an international collaboration between NASA, European Space Agency and Canadian Space Agency. Webb will reveal new and unexpected discoveries and help humanity understand the origins of universe and our place in it. Moving on, consider the following statements. Radioactivity is the phenomenon of spontaneous emission of particles or waves from the unstable nuclei of some elements and a small amount of radioactive radiation is found in some types of water also. So we have to select the correct statement. First is correct, second is not. Option A is correct. Why? Let's know. Recently, radioactive pollution in water and associated health impacts have been reported in many parts of the globe. Radioactivity is the phenomenon of spontaneous emission of particles or waves from the unstable nuclei of some elements. There are three types of radioactive emissions, namely alpha, beta and gamma. Moving on, alpha particles are positively charged. Helium atoms, beta particles are negatively charged electrons and gamma rays are neutral electromagnetic radiations. Radioactive elements are naturally found in the Earth's crust. Uranium, thorium and actinium are three norm that is naturally occurring radioactive material series that contaminate water resources. A small amount of radiation is found in all types of water, but the extended amount of radiation is harmful to human health. Moving on, radioactivity in drinking water can be determined by a gross alpha test. Okay, And radioactivity is measured in Becquerel that is the SI unit or in Curie. The unit C word measures the quantity of radiation absorbed by human tissues. Very important line. Move on. Consider the following statements regarding United Nations Convention on the Laws of the Sea. It replaced the four Geneva Conventions of April 1958. The convention has become the legal framework for marine and maritime activities. It provides a different legal status to different maritime zones. So we have to select the Correct statement or statements? All three are correct. The correct answer is option D. India remained committed to promoting a free, open and rules-based order rooted in the international law and undaunted by coercion. The center informed parliament while reiterating support for the United Nations Convention on the Laws of the Sea. It is the only international convention which stipulates a framework for state jurisdiction and maritime spaces. It provides a different legal status to different maritime zones. It provides the backbone for offshore governance by coastal states and those navigating the oceans. It not only zones coastal states offshore areas, but also provides specific guidance for states' rights and responsibilities in the five concentric zones. United Nations Convention on Laws of the Sea was adopted and signed in 1982 and it became effective in the year 1994. It replaced the four Geneva Conventions of April 1958, which respectively concern the territorial seas and contiguous zone, the continental shelf, the high seas, fishing and conservation of living resources on the high seas. The convention has become legal framework for maritime and maritime activities. Moving on, consider the following statements. Article 361 of the constitution deals with parliamentary privileges. Parliamentary privileges extend to the president of India. Now, as we have to select the correct answer, correct statement, none of them are correct. The correct answer to this question is option D. Remarks by former Supreme Court Chief Justice of India Ranjan Gogoi in a recent interview to a TV channel have led to the filing of a privileged motion against him by Trinamool Congress. At least 10 other parliamentarians from different parties are expected to move similar motions. Parliamentary privileges are certain rights and immunities enjoyed by the members of the parliament individually and collectively so that they can effectively discharge their function. Now. When any of these rights and immunities are disregarded, the offence is called a breach of privilege, which is punishable under the law of the parliament. Article 105 of the constitution expressively mentions two parliamentary privileges, that is freedom of speech in the parliament and the right of publication of its proceedings. Article 361 of the constitution provides for privileges for the president. Okay. And the parliamentary privileges do not extend to the president, who is also an integral part of the Parliament, remember this, very important. Moving on, consider the following statements with respect to United Nations Security Council. 
the decisions of the security council on matters are made by an affirmative vote of nine members including the conquering votes of the permanent members the no a no vote from any one of the members blocks the passage of the resolution so we have to select the correct statement first is correct second is incorrect because a no vote from any one of the permanent members blocks the passage not from any one of the members that means the second statement is talking about the non permanent as well option a is correct one only india voted against a unsc draft resolution on climate and security yesterday that attempted to securitize climate action and undermine the hard won consensual agreement in glasgow the un's charter establishes six main organs of the un which includes unsc article 23 of the un charter concerns the composition of unsc the other five organs are the general assembly trusteeship council economic and social council international court court of justice and the secretariat unsc is composed of 15 members five permanent and non permanent five permanent members include china france russian federation uk and the united states it represents the old world order 10 non permanent members include those members who are elected for two year terms by the general assembly now each member of the security council has one vote decisions of the security council on matters are made by an affirmative vote of nine members which includes the conquering votes of the permanent members and the no vote from one of the five members it blocks the passage of the resolution let's move forward consider the following statements with respect to the national testing agency nta nta is chaired by an eminent educationist appointed by the ministry of education it was established as a society registered under the indian societies registration act of 1860 so we have to select the correct statement both are correct the correct answer is option c the national testing agency has launched a mobile app namely national test abhyas to facilitate candidates access to high quality mock tests online which is free of cost nta was established as a society registered under the indian societies registration act of 1860 It is an autonomous and self-sustained testing organization to conduct entrance examination for admission or fellowship in higher education institution which is chaired by an eminent educationist appointed by the Ministry of Education the chief executive officer will be the director general to be appointed by the government there will be a board of governors comprising members from user institutions let's know about the app over 14 lakh neet students and more than 9 lakh jee students have registered in the app Over 81 lakh sessions of mock tests for NEET and over 50 lakh for JEE have been conducted. The government has also launched study webs for active learning for the young aspiring minds. It offers interactive course content such as video lectures, reading material, self-assessment through tests and quizzes, and online discussion forum for clearing doubts of the student. Remember the class from class ninth to post graduation, and this content can be accessed free of cost by anyone, anywhere. at any time the ma umia dham development project is situated in which of the following states or union territories the correct answer to this question is option d gujarat the ma umia dham development project is situated in gujarat recently prime minister modi has said the project is a perfect example of the nation of the notion that is the idea of sabka prayas as this auspicious project will be fulfilled with the efforts of all He was speaking at the foundation stone laying of Ma Umia Dham development project involving Umia Mata Dham temple and temple premises in Gujarat via video conferencing yesterday. Moving on, consider the following statements with respect to Bharat Electronics Limited. It is a public sector undertaking under the Ministry of Commerce. It is responsible for developing electronic voting machine and voter verified paper audit trial. We have to select the not correct statement. First is not correct. Although it's a public sector undertaking, it doesn't come under the Ministry of Commerce but Ministry of Defence. Second is correct. The correct answer is option A, one only. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh inaugurated the exhibition of defence products of Bharat Electronics Limited and Kodwar, Uttarakhand through virtual medium yesterday. The exhibition is organised as a part of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav (BEL) is an Indian state-owned aerospace and defence company. It is a public sector undertaking under the Ministry of Defence of India. It primarily manufactures advanced electronic products for the Indian Armed Forces. It has been granted the Navratna status. Moving on, consider the following statements with respect to the supersonic missile-assisted torpedo. It has been developed by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. The system has been designed to enhance anti-submarine warfare capability far beyond the conventional range of the torpedo. 
as we have to say the correct answer. First is incorrect. It has been developed by DRDO. Second is correct. The correct answer is option B. India yesterday successfully launched a supersonic missile assisted torpedo from Wheeler Island in Odisha. The weapon system is being developed by DRDO for the Indian Navy. This system is a next generation missile based stand of torpedo delivery system. The system has been designed to enhance anti submarine warfare capability far beyond the conventional range of torpedoes. The missile is launched from a ground mobile launcher and it can cover a range of distances. Let's move on to the practice question for the next segment. Consider the following statements. The National Energy Conservation Day is an initiative of the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. India is a member nation of the International Energy Agency as well as the Mission Innovation. The Bureau of Energy Efficiency functions under the Ministry of Power. So we have to select the correct statement. Okay. I hope you will be answering it correctly in the comment segment. That's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching.